those instructions that the Buddha gave to Rahula at the very beginning of his time as a monk are basically instructions on approaching the practice as a skill. You make up your mind you're going to try to act skillfully, and then you figure out what to do. You try to do it. Watch for the results while you're doing it. If you notice that something is coming out not the way you wanted it, you stop. If things seem to be coming the way you want, you continue. And then when they're done, you look at what you got. When you're learning a physical skill, it applies to the object you're working on, or there's carpentry, flower arranging, cooking. You make up your mind you're going to make a good, good dish, and then you taste it while you're doing it, and then you taste it again when it's done. You make a chest of drawers. While you're working on it, you have to pass judgment on your actions as to whether they're what you intended or not, or if what you intended is not working out, try something else. Then when the object is done, you look at it and see what you can learn from it. We're doing the same with the breath. We want the mind to settle down. What kind of breathing will help? We try things out. try chest breathing, you try abdominal breathing, you try breathing all the way down to your toes, which feels good, which do you find easy to settle down. How about longer or shorter breathing, faster or slower? Think of the breath penetrating all the way deep into your brain. Think of it penetrating into your bones. What way of thinking about the breath is easiest to stay with? And then as you do this, you learn a lot. The one thing you're learning how to learn. You're learning about cause and effect, both in the mind and the body. This is important because when the Buddha gave his most succinct summary of what he gained awakening to, it was a principle of cause and effect. When there is this, there is that. When this isn't, that isn't. From the arising of this comes the arising of that. From the cessation of this comes the cessation of that. It sounds pretty abstract, but he's boiling down a principle that was tested by seeing what kind of actions lead to good results and what kind of actions don't. What kind of actions lead you outside of normal cause and effect and lead to the end of action. That's the big one right there. But to get to that big one, you have to work with the little ones. What kind of breathing feels good right now? Could it feel better? And as you work with this, and don't let yourself get discouraged, use your powers of observation, use your ingenuity on little things like this, the same way that you work with hammers and saws needle and thread when you're making flower arrangements, working with flour and butter when you're working with baking, you learn more than just about the needle and the thread and the flour and the butter and the hammers and the saws. You learn a lot about the mind. You learn a lot about your body. And the Buddha takes that principle of working with little things like the breath, trying to settle down with the breath. And if you do it with, with care, it means care with each breath, in the same way that when you're folding banana leaves, you fold each banana leaf. You pay total attention to the banana leaf you're working on right now, and find that by staying absorbed in the immediate task, the larger task gets done. And as you develop the basic skills, then you can play with them. And it's in the playing around that you learn even more about cause and effect 
the mind, and the body. This is how the bigger lessons come about. This is so different from the normal way we in America approach spiritual practice. Years back I was reading a book where the author made the point that regardless of what religion or what denomination of religious thought in America, it all came down to Methodism. In other words, the belief that if your heart was good, everything else would follow in being good. And people carry that into Buddhism. If you get in touch with your awakened mind, they say, then you don't have to think much. Just get in touch with your awakened mind and you'll know instinctively what to do. But that doesn't help you learn anything. Because what may instinctively feel right right now, is it really right? And of course you can't learn from any one moment as to what will be right for the next moment. So there's no learning going on. And there's no heedfulness. If you try that approach with carpentry or baking or flower inching, you'd end up with a mess. Especially the idea that you can instinctively just get in touch with your awakened nature and then you don't have to think about what you're going to do or say or think because it'll all flow naturally. It's a no common sense zone. That was one of the things that was so bracing about meeting a John Fuang, is everything was very common sense, down to earth. But it wasn't small-minded. A very large mind had developed as a result, large in the sense of being compassionate, wise. Skillful in what he did and said and thought, but it started from the little things not overlooking the little things, because it's in that quality of careful attention that you really learn. So remember, we are working on a skill here. It requires common sense. It'll take you ultimately to a place beyond common sense, but it's not below common sense. The below common sense is when you just say, well, I'll go with my feelings. And however you interpret the source of those feelings as to why they should be trusted, that leads nowhere. But the path, and that's why the Buddha gave the image of the path to begin with, does lead someplace. The raft takes you across the river. The path takes you to a goal. And as we all know about walking along a path, if you take, if you're very careful about each step, you don't trip, you don't stumble. You're not thinking too much about the goal. You're just paying attention to this step and this step and this step, knowing that they'll take you to the goal. So if you pay a lot of attention right here, it takes you far. So stay with each breath, each breath, each breath. Try to develop a sensitive touch, because it's in that sensitivity that discernment arises, and it's through that discernment that there comes release. <laughs>